It's Thursday, August 5th, and the time for your body is to be on news of it. There is no clear evidence at this point of a serial killer targeting sex workers in the city. So says the country's police commissioner, Tyrone Griffith, as detectives continue investigations into the discovery of a naked and a decomposing female body at Beckwith Street, St. Michael. Police have not yet released the deceased woman's name, but Barbados today understands she was well known to Nelson Street residents as Jamaica. However, since Monday's discovery, there has been much speculation on social media, coupled with claims that sex workers in the Bay Street and Nelson Street areas fear that a serial killer may be on the prowl. Well, what I can't say to you is that there is, at this point, that there is, I wouldn't say to you at this point that I can we can conclude that there's a serious serial killer. I, I, I love that as well. I would say to you, um, what I would say though is that obviously our investigations are looking at um, commonalities to see where where if there if there any is really any relationship. Um, so we look at that things like victimology and, and so forth. So at this point, I think it's too early for for us to to conclude that there is a serial killer. Bridgetown has been identified as a hot spot for the spread of the COVID-19 virus. That's according to Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth George, who says health officials are conducting aggressive contact tracing to quickly contain any further potential spread. Emmanuel Joseph has more in this report. In making the revelation on Wednesday, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth George said it was now necessary for public health officials to conduct random testing in the urban area. We have identified the city area as a hotspot and are trying to do some specific work in that area to do some random testing and to get some messaging out. But the contact tracing leads to where the contact tracing leads. So if you might have heard that the, um, that the fish market might have been exposed, so we did the contact tracing there and we are waiting on those results. Since that, the Barbados Government Information Service issued a statement advising members of the public that the Bridgetown Fisheries Complex would remain closed for the remainder of the week following confirmation of two positive COVID-19 cases. Residents have also been informed that the market is now closed for sanitization and that all staff and personnel from the complex should be tested for the viral illness as soon as possible. Meanwhile, the chief medical officer explained what caused the hot spot in the city. It started out with a wedding that led us to some bars and rum shops, that led us to more bars and rum shops, that led us to a housing area in the city. That's how it goes. It, it goes as we get information. Dr. Jaws said there were currently 16 clusters across the country, seven of which are active. More stakeholders from the local transport sector are seeking answers from various government departments about the rising cost of fuel. President of the Bridgetown Port Taxi Co-op Adrian Bailey revealed that he has written to Minister of Energy Small Business and Entrepreneurship Kerry Simmons on the matter. President of the Independent Seaport Taxi Union Anthony Eastman and Communications Officer of the Alliance Owners of Public Transport Mark Haynes have also called on government to review the current tariff structure as their members struggle to keep their businesses afloat. Haynes tells Barbados today the situation is most untenable and cannot continue. The cost of petrol products continues to be astronomical at the pump, not only for the PSV sector, whose financial gains continue to dwindle and is rather debilitating owing to the fact that ridership continues to be at 75% as we are in conformity with the COVID-19 restrictions. Additionally, taxis, drivers of regular vehicles, and a whole section of the wider society are feeling this financial burden. 
the PSV sector is under enormous stress in an effort to survive as it grapples with other miscellaneous costs. This situation is not only unsustainable in this current environment, but most untenable and cannot continue unabated. I therefore call on the government of Barbados to move with alacrity to address this vexing and worrying situation by adjusting the taxation policy in specific relation to gas products at the pump. Meanwhile, Eastman said many taxi operators are continuing to question the government's rationale for subjecting them to the exorbitant fuel taxes while continuing to charge an annual road tax. We are still paying half, half of the road tax. So, in order to make it a little bit more equitable for taxi operators and barbarians, we should be given the same leverage as 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 the private private cars. Then right. I will know that we know more fuel than the private cars. Yeah. But still we have to pay um half of the the, the road tax in Barbados. Okay. So half the permit and road tax. So what is needed now is just to at least if if you can do half, give you a further reduction on your taxi. Okay. That's, that's the only best thing I can see that, that can help people. There's regional and international news after this short break. From the region, talks are currently underway in Guyana on the possibility of vaccinating the country's school children. Gordon Mosley of News Source Guyana reports. As the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Health press forward to examine various plans for the reopening of schools in September, the Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony today said talks are currently ongoing for COVID vaccination rollout in the schools once the approved vaccines for children are procured. The minister did not say whether those vaccines will be optional, but he noted that the children will receive the jab under existing law. There is a, an existing immunization law uh, in Guyana as it pertains to children, and we will be um, giving those vaccines in accordance with that uh, particular law. The health minister was referring to the Public Health School Children Immunization Act of 1974. The law makes provision for the immunization of persons seeking entry into schools and daycare centers against certain communicable diseases. Two vaccines have been approved for children between the ages of 12 and 18. Guyana is seeking the Pfizer vaccine, which is being used in the U.S. for children. The government of Guyana is actively working to get vaccines for children. There have been uh, two vaccines that have been given emergency use authorization in the United States, and that is the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine. And so far, um, they're being used for persons between uh, 12 to 18, and um, we are actively trying to get those vaccines uh, into Guyana so that we can administer it to our children. The and finally, the Mexican government has sued some of the biggest gun manufacturers in the U.S., accusing them of unleashing tremendous bloodshed in Mexico through reckless business practices. We get more in this Reuters report about the unusual lawsuit. The Mexican government on Wednesday sued several gun manufacturers in a U.S. court, alleging negligent business practices that caused damage in Mexico, according to a foreign ministry document seen by Reuters. The civil suit alleges that units of Smith & Wesson, Barrett Firearms, 
Colt's manufacturing company, Glock Incorporated, Sturm, Ruger and & Company, and others knew their business practices generated illegal arms trafficking in Mexico, the document said. Mexican officials said on Wednesday that Mexico is seeking compensation for damages, which are estimated at as much as $10 billion. Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador has been prioritizing tackling the flow of illicit firearms from the United States into Mexico, which has seen record high homicide rates in recent years. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.